So William Hoops, refresh. There we are again. Booyah. Now we are streaming in the hub, Young and Hungry in my page. Now I'm going to edit this. I'm going to take the five minutes off. I'm going to go to 30 seconds. So we're going live in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Ten There it is. Hello, 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 hello. If you can hear me, hear me. Check, check, check. I always have to double check my sound, so I'm going on my phone to make sure I can hear myself. This is episode one, so we're going to work through the kinks. Let's make sure we have sound. There it is. Yes. We have sound. Lovely. All right, guys, listen, Bill Hoops here, man. I am live in my store. I am coming with the first episode of Taco Tuesday Talks. We are live in my store here in Trinity. It's a lot of fun. I've got my first guest here, uh, a gentleman who I've known well over a year. You've seen us do events together. Uh, we were on a softball team together. Uh, he is in and out all over town. The man with the plan. Uh, don't call him AAA because he is major league. He is none other other than Tyler Hardigan. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to my store, my show, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. Can't wait. It's exciting. You guys are slammed today. Taco Tuesday. We are busy today, right? I want to see real quick. Let me, I'm going to pull my phone up. This phone connects to here. Oh, what's up, man? You're live on the hub right now. What's going on? These are extra ones. Okay, yeah, just leave them there. We'll and take them back. Missing one. They're missing 20 one. by 25. I don't know. That's everything he gave me. So you'll have to ask him about maybe getting another one. Yeah. Look, we're live here in the hub. There's no, uh, we can't stop business, right? This is my AC guy with Christian LeBron and LeBron AC. All right. Well, good. I'll right. touch base with I'll him. We'll get it worked out. Yeah. All right. Let me, I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi on because I want to see if I can pull up a camera view here just real quick. Booyah. Let's do this. Watch this. Let's see if we can do it. Yep. iPhone. Booyah. That's exactly what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Cancer. Yeah. So look, here you go. Here's an extra view. You can see the store just so you can see the view, Tyler. So the the, the iPhone connects to this the program, right? So now you can see the view of the store. Anyways, that was fun. Let's get rid of that garbage. So we are here. That's what happens when you're, you're right, a business owner and an entrepreneur. We're sitting here doing a live show in a live environment and people are coming in and out. So Tyler, talk to me about you man what's going on what's current right you're a young guy you're you're a business owner family man married kids running multiple businesses doing the young and hungry running events helping rap houses this young guy uh has a ton of stuff going on so talk about it man yeah, so i mean you pretty much hit it all in the head so i am a business owner i own major league painters uh started the business back in 2022 had a previous business since 2018 uh Currently have five guys running crews, you know, so I'm kind of more of in the management role, doing estimate sales, um, able to do things like this, get in the community, do some podcasts. Uh, also, am the founder and the creator of the Young and Hungry Entrepreneur. Okay. Which started as a coaching consulting company for small business owners. Well, actually, rewind. It started as uh, a place for business owners to find people like themselves that just don't understand, uh, you know, what business is all about, right? Being an entrepreneur is lonely. Um, but it doesn't have to be if you're surrounded by the right people. So that's why Young and Hungry started. Um, fast forward about a year, it turned into a coaching consulting company for small businesses. So yeah. I have business owners like myself in the community um, that come to networking meetings, they come to coaching meetings, they get involved with community events such as uh, kickball tournaments, Halloween, all kinds of stuff. We do it together as a community rather than as a solo entrepreneur. I love it, right? So. 
So Brandon jumped in. He says, hey, buddy, the man, the myth, Tyler Hardigan. And then Jen Verge jumps on Young and Hungry Celebrity Kickball Tournament 2024 presented by Veterans with Vacuum. So uh, this tournament was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago, last weekend, week before last. Uh, got rained out, right? So you have rescheduled it for when? The 30th. March 30th. Yep. Okay, so March 30th, Mitchell Park, right? Still opportunity? Is it closed up? Like, what are you asking for from the community in regard to the event? We're still looking for volunteers. We're still looking for donations. Um, all of our sponsorships are pretty much full. Our teams are full. Uh, we've had some teams drop out. We have some teams step up. Uh, other than that, we are just looking for people to come out, engage, hang out, buy some popcorn, uh, root us on, and then have fun. Yeah, so what's the what's the... What's the purpose of the tournament, though? What are you doing with the funds raised? What are you, you know, what what are you putting this celebrity kickball tournament on for? Yeah, so the celebrities are small business owners in the community. Um, the kickball tournament, all funds are going to the Rap House, which is uh, a runaway facility for troubled kids, um, kind of a placement for before foster care stuff like that. But it's the Rap House over in Newport Ritchie. It's near and dear to our heart. Everyone in the Young and Hungry um, goes there, volunteers. So we do cookouts. We do um, just hang out, have social hours, play basketball. You know, just hang out with these kids that don't have parents in their lives. Uh, so all the money raised is going to them. We're not keeping a single dollar. Uh, and I love that program, right? Because I was one of those kids, right? I mean, I was raised by a single mother. I had a hard, you know, time growing up. I ran away from home a couple of times. Mom, you don't know what you're doing. Don't, you know. So as kids, sometimes we think we got it all figured out. So we go away. And sometimes we really just have no resources. So we have to find a place to go. And that's what the Rap House is, right? It's a place for kids to be able to go and catch a break and get some support uh but that's not overly funded right that place while it's nice and comfortable i've been there a few times right capital has done a couple things with the rap house it seems that you know the players in the hub the the hub pro community really migrates to the rap house and the things that 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 are going on so Talk about what you've seen the impact of the rap house in, in kids, right? So so here's a program that we're given to. Talk about what you've actually seen come out of that program from giving to them. Yeah, so I don't know much on the like logistics of the program other than I've been there when there's been 17 kids. I've been there, there's been three kids. Um, now, whether those kids went to back to home or if they went to government facilities, I'm not sure where they went. Sure. But I do know that when you're there, the kids aren't moping around miserable, talking about how they don't want to live life. It's they're looking for what's next. Yeah. Uh, when I went there, we spoke to I think it was like 10 or 12 kids, um, all males at the time, myself and Tim Grace. Went, and uh, it's crazy to see that a lot of the kids wanted to start businesses. A lot of them wanted to be business yeah. owners. One of, a lot of them wanted to, to play high school sports. They just don't have the the people behind them pushing them in the right direction. Isn't that what it's all about, right? Because I didn't open my first business until I was, well, I'm 44 now. PGF's been open eight years. So I was 36, right? 36 years old. These kids are sitting there looking for guidance, looking for direction, looking for young men and women like you, like me, that that have kind of been through it, right? I mean, you you and I have talked before. You didn't grow up in roses and bubble gum, right? So they're looking for opportunity to be able to excel and be able to lift up, right? So I, I love what you're doing there. Jen goes on to say, Major League Painters, the collaboratory, young and hungry entrepreneur, young and hungry elite, Tyler Hardigan, is on fire so how does that feel right how does that feel to have people who are experienced who are at the top of their craft you know praising you like that saying that you know this guy's involved this guy's on fire he's really making a change in his impact on his community yeah it's a uh, it's a really good feeling i could get emotional about it if i talked about it too much that's but okay I, I would say it's more or less um i'm not done yet i'm 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 making small steps in the community and I have, I have a long way to go and yeah. uh, just sit back, hold on and watch out. Cause it's, it's going to be cool. Talk about family, right? It, it, you've got some young kids, you coach in sports, right? You're involved with the community that way. Talk about your love for the kids. I see you posting pictures on Facebook uh, with you coaching and talking about what's important. So as, as a young father, you know, speak to other fathers about the time that you spend with the kids and how that time you know, is irreplaceable. I know for me, my kids are older, yeah. right? My daughter's 23. Uh, my son is 18. He goes to River Ridge. He's a senior getting ready to graduate. Um, so that time, man, that you think you have forever, right? It goes by fast. And one day you wake up and they're 18 and they're coming and going. So 
Talk about the fun you're having coaching and the impact that you're making on these young kids. Yeah, so I had my son at 19, maybe 20 years old, um, and then a year later started my first business. So I've, okay. I've been all in. <laughs> very beginning. Yeah. Um, but my son started playing soccer at four years old, maybe okay. five years old. And um, I've just always wanted to be that parent that was like all in or nothing. Like I'm all in and my kids, my daughter, my wife, everything. So my son started playing soccer and at four years old and I was like herding cattle, right? It was it was a blast to be on the field. It was a blast to be with him on every one of those moments. Um, but soccer wasn't his thing. So quickly, he went to T-ball, right? So he played T-ball. I sat there as a parent um, and watched his first season of T-ball. And it was tough for me to sit there and watch. <laughs> like I want to be on the field. I want to be, I want to be his hype guy, right? Yeah. Not even his, all the kids. Yeah. You know, all the kids go there, whether it's for their parents to get an hour of freedom or for these kids think they're going pro, you know, whatever right. it is. Um, but I want to be involved in all of that. So my son played a couple seasons of T-ball and then he fell in love with basketball, which I fell in love with because it's indoors. There's no rain delays. It's not hot. Yeah. And uh, I had the opportunity to coach the basketball. So he's been doing basketball for eight seasons now. Okay. Um, and I've coached seven of those. Nothing wrong with the little hoops. I knew. <laughs> I <know one. laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> but I knew absolutely nothing about basketball when I started coaching, but yeah. I know how to coach. I know how to be a mentor. I know how to be a leader. Yeah. Um, and that's what I was able to do on basketball. And uh, I have parents every year asking for us to come back, asking for me to coach. How do I get my son on your team? Um, and then long story short, he fell in love with football. So we're on our first season of football. Okay. Black football right now. Yeah. Um, I was asked to coach because they were short on coaches. Pa football was my passion. Okay. Part of my gender reveal for my son was a blue football helmet. <laughs> that was my life. Well, there you go. In football, yeah. So uh, he's fell in love with football. So I don't know where it's going to go, basketball or football, but he's um, – He's, he's an athlete. And it's okay to go with both of them, right? Right? I mean, I, I, you know, I've been coaching and I run one of the biggest, you know, event leagues for girls softball. And, you know, so many parents want to fixate their kids on one sport, yeah. right? They want to they wanna specialize in one sport because if I specialize, this kid has a greater chance of getting a scholarship, right? But what they don't realize is they run greater risk of injury, right? They run greater risk of boredom. They run greater risk of burnout, you know, those kinds of things. So multiple sports and allowing them to do multiple things and go to experience multiple things, uh, certainly important. So Cyrus, uh, you know, Cyrus jumps on, says, my guy, Tyler, thanks for supporting the Rack Fishing Association. So that's great, right? So so Cyrus is a veteran. He's active duty Army. If you don't know Cyrus, he runs uh, a veteran uh, kayak fishing I don't want to say club, but business. He does tournaments. He helps support yeah, he takes, veterans he takes through. Veterans fishing. He works with the community to get veterans to go fishing, uh, which is really cool. I've, I've followed Cyrus for some years now. Um, long story short, my stepdad actually started back in the day with him. Not sure what he's doing with it now, but yeah. uh, what Cyrus does, you know, plays a big role in our community. So I, uh, you know, I sponsored one of their events um, and I'm even going to sign up for his $22 a month because $264 a year to take a veteran fishing. Yeah. I'll do that all day. I love it, right? Yeah, because just that peace and serene of being out on the water, being around like-minded individuals sometimes breaks up the monotony of of the things that, you know, they went to. I was in the Navy, as you know, for almost 17 years. I never went hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was always on a ship, you know, hundreds of miles off the coast, so we didn't experience a lot of those things, but I, I know quite a few people that have been through some pretty tough situations, lost friends, lost people, lost, you know, brothers and sisters in arms. So uh, Cyrus doing big things out there. Maybe we'll have to get him on here, right? So yeah. talk about your business, right? So we've talked about Young and Hungry. We've talked about what you're doing to support the community, uh, all of those things. Talk about Major League Painters, right? How is that different from other painting companies? How are you standing out? What kind of products do you offer like talk me through hi my name is bill i'm a customer i you know i'd like to be able to xyz so what's the process you know what what's talk about major league painting yeah so i am a, i'm a big believer in if it's not broke don't fix it and uh obviously major league baseball as a as an organization their branding works right uh, they're known nationally their colors are everywhere uh, so why not go with a major league brand, right? Okay. Whether it's major league painting, whether it's major league drywall, whether it's major league contracting, major league pool services, whatever it is. Yeah. 
I want to be known as a brand, a big brand. Ready to be drafted. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I mean, as far as painting, we're not we're not any different from any other any other painting company. I don't. I wouldn't say we have competition. I wouldn't say we're better than anyone else. I would say um, we make it easy. It's okay. Simple. You know, when you're calling a home, you're calling a contractor because you need your house painted. You already know it's going to be expensive. You already know how contracting works. It's not budget friendly. Like usually, the person coming to your door is not. Uh, they don't smell good. They don't. They don't. They don't drive a nice vehicle, right? Now you're nervous of how they're going to be working in your home. Yeah. Um, so we've eliminated all of that, right? I'm the one coming to your house doing your estimates. I'm the one answering your phone. I have a phenomenal crew that comes out and paints your house, yeah. right? And I'm along with that, that whole process we communicate with. We communicate from the pressure washing to the ceiling of the home, to the prepping of the home, to the painting of the home, to the final walkthrough, to, to the day we collect that check. It's a seamless process. Um, so we've kind of eliminated the, the not knowing what's coming next in the contracting world as far as my painting business. Yeah, but doesn't that process alone set you apart and make you different where you just said you're you're not any different because you're the owner, yeah. right? You're sending not Larry, not Susan, not Jerry, not Bob, and for now, right. right? Until you're, you're, you're really got 19 crews and you're going all over the Bay Area, right? As you continue to grow. But I would agree with what you did, right? Because I called you as a customer, right? And, and and we may still move forward with that, right? But you did. You came to that not just because we're friends, right. but because that's your business model. You came to the house. You asked, what is our need? Why are we doing this? What is the goal? Where do we want to go? What is the purpose? Why, right? Yeah. So as the owner, I felt like it was going to be well done right because just like you said if i send larry or susan out there and they're not well trained they don't have my culture they don't have my expertise how do i know that they're going to finish the product yeah. right so where you're at in your growth pattern right now you're still handling all of that Correct. um but i would say that that certainly is what sets you apart right because i've seen again pictures of you uh, up on some ladders and up on some scaffolds and yeah. and you are painting and you are you know, involved. Uh, Reagan jumps on and says, I know both of those dudes. Talk about Reagan for a second, right? Talk about that mentorship, right? He calls you, he calls you a little brother, right? <laughs> a little bro. Uh, but I think it's all in good fun. And he's, he's a great, uh, well-hearted individual. Talk about that relationship and how he has kind of been, you know, from what I've seen from an outside source looking in your your go-to mentor because look he's a go-to kind of mentor for me him and i are the same age and and i call this guy every other day hey i feel like i need to provide more value for him yeah. for all the things that you know he's quick to do uh for everyone else so just talk about that relationship yeah so i uh i found reagan by accident right so i wasn't in the hub wasn't in hub pro was a struggling business owner trying to find my way right yeah and uh, he posted on Facebook looking for uh, volunteers to come out and donate their time to pick up over 200 Christmas trees that fell down in downtown Newport Ritchie. Okay. I was slow, had nothing going on, came out and donated a couple hours worth of my time, probably five, six, seven hours, um, just to pick Christmas trees back up, fill them with water, put stakes in the ground. Um, but little did I know that was going to turn into a mentorship, a brotherhood. Uh, like I said, I was struggling in business and I found Reagan at the, at the right time. Yeah. Right. He was looking for someone more or less to, to coach and to guide. Um, he just launched his 43 marketing thing. So I, it started off as a paid mentorship. I was yeah. paying Reagan to, to coach me, to guide me, to help me market. Um, and I think I paid him for like a month and a half, maybe two months. And he was like, dude, I'm not paying you. You have the same vision. Like we have the same visions. Um, you can grow. I can help you grow. So truthfully, a lot of my success I owe to Reagan because uh, constantly that like that fire under my ass, like pushing me to do more, to do better. You're not tired. You just don't know how to manage time. Like keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And that's literally the name of his book, Keep Going. And it's because that's what he tells you to do every single day. Yeah. Um, so I found him at the right time and it was 100% by accident. Um, I don't have family that I'm super close to. My dad lives thousands of miles away. Um, I don't have like that big brother mentorship, right? Yeah. So he was uh, an important role in my life at that time. Still is today. We're business owners on the collaboratory, um, potential business owners on other projects. Who knows what's to come, but sure. um, yeah, it plays a big role in my life. For and sure. that's so important, right? Because we're leaders. 
we're owners. We have employees. Yep. We have customers. We have people that we are ultimately responsible for, right? If somebody's paying us for a transactional relationship, it's our job. It's our commitment to be able to provide everything during that, right? So, you know, for me, I started saying up probably six months ago, right? Even the coach, which I'm a coach, I'm a coach on the field in softball. I'm a coach in the Navy. I'm a coach here in my work center. I'm a coach at home, right? It's all coaching and developing and leading, right? And, and even the coach sometimes needs a coach, right? Even when we're at the top of the mountain, we still need somebody to say, okay, you got here. Now what? Yeah. What are you doing now? Are you going to get comfortable? Are you just floating? Right? So so guys like Reagan and guys like the people in the hub and, and, and the people in our hub pro group and, and those people, my microphone's slipping, uh, those are super important to have. Like I'm in, I do a lot of online classes and mentoring with Andy Elliott yeah. and, and a couple other different, you know, strong, willed, powerful speakers that then give me the confidence to handle my day to day. Right? So- how is business, right? Economy slow. I know for me here in Capital Tacos, like last year, the first six months of the year, we're on fire. Yeah. I mean, we were going, 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 and everything was rocking and rolling and going and going. And then like July, August hit and it was like, skirt. somebody hit the brakes yeah. and things shut off, right? So then as a leader, you see that line go, and then you got to catch it. And realize why that's happening and then market, build, market, build, market, build, market, build in order to get yourself out there. So you're in a trade, right? Are people buying paint? Are people getting their houses painted or are they holding on saying, I want to see what happens? How is business? Yeah. So, I mean, it goes both ways. I think um, people with money always spend money, right? So you have to market your business to the right people. Uh, as far as trades, obviously tacos are tacos. You can't, ha! you know, you can't market those. Somebody always tacos wants away. tacos. That's right. As far as painting, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not marketing to a renter. Renters more than likely aren't paying to have their house painted, right? Sure. Um, so it's all in marketing. I would say um, this year has been wild. It's been crazy. It's been different. I haven't expected this. Um, but over the last two businesses, over the last four years, pressure washing was completely different, right? All you had to do was get in front of people. Yeah. Be the cheapest guy. Yeah. That was it. You know, overhead was low. Uh, products were low. Material was low. Just be the cheapest guy and you're going to grow. Right. Um, painting's completely different. You're going to be the cheapest guy. You're going to go out of business. Painting's cutthroat. Okay. You know, uh, you need to know your margins. You need to know what good painters make salary wise. Yeah. Because they will leave you for $5. <laughs> yeah. They will. Um, and then also building culture. December, we went 11 days with no work. That was a gut punch. That yeah. was like probably one of the hardest things I've gone through in my life as far as being in business. Um, so that was a reality check. I had to find what I was lacking in. And believe it or not, I was lacking in guiding my team, right? Okay. Um, I, was, I was lacking in marketing. You haven't seen any videos of me marketing my business in a long time. Right. Mentally, I was tapped out, right? So I had to find, I had to remember my why. Remember why I started. Um, remember that I don't want to punch a clock. Right. That's why I'm different. That's why I started a business. That's why I sold a business. That's why I started another business because I can do this. Right? right. It wasn't luck the first time. I know how to do this. And I just had to remember that. So I started marketing, started going to networking things, started getting my name out there, walking into contracting offices. Everything that I did in the very beginning, I did again. And we're busy. Right, right now we're booked out about three weeks. Um, phones. I, yesterday I had like five phone calls in one day, which is the most I've had in a long time. Today I've had four. Um, so I'm at the point where like, okay, now I'm in growth mode. Do I need to start hiring? Do I need to enjoy this ride for a little bit longer and let it go? So that's where I'm at right now. I, I, like my pivot points, do I strap on and ride this thing out as long as I can or do I start building? Right. So that's the, the things I, I fight in my head. But uh, every day is a, a new day. <laughs> it is. It is. Pause you for one second. Yes, sir. I gotta go get the filter. Okay. But if Christian wants to know if you want me to buy more filters to free to stop. Well, this will take me to my next one, right? Well, Whatever you think I... Four filter changes right here for one unit. Okay. So I need to get... Uh, I will pick up four more for the other two. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Whatever I need. All right. Welcome to Business Ownership 101, right? <laughs> so so you went through the low, right? Yeah. You were You were here, you were here, you were here, you got stuck, and you had an opportunity there to go, oh, well, I'm failing, or... 
what? I'm failing and and pick yourself up. And and it sounds like from the second week of December, the 10 day dry spell to now, you know, last week of February, that seven week period there, you've been able to market, advertise, catch the boomerang on its way back. And now you're now you're making some profit again for I yourself. Say, I would say when you think of being an entrepreneur and you think about the journey, um, I've been there, right? I've been at the high of the high and I've been at the low of the low and uh, I've cried myself to sleep. I've woke up not knowing how I'm going to pay my guys. Hey, it's Friday, payroll's due and I don't have no money in my account. I've gone through that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but my goal is to never get there again, right? Uh, so when I say strap on and enjoy this ride, that's not being greedy. It's, it's remember how far you've come to get to this point. Like remember no work. Remember not having a team right. and I'm going to enjoy this for a little while, right? Um, that's all I mean. But it's a. Uh, I love being an entrepreneur. I would never trade it. Never trade it. It's tough. It is tough. Right. It's tough it. when you gotta when you gotta look your your wife or your husband in the face and say, not this week, but next. Yeah. Right. When you gotta say, hey, we need to push this and pull that. Right. Everybody thinks business ownership. Like when they walk in my store here, everybody thinks, okay, that's the guy that owns the building. He must be on cloud nine. Yeah. Right. And and they don't realize that this building only does so much, yeah. right? And then it's up to me to navigate those prime costs, that that food cost, that labor, the customer relationship, the customer experience, and then the same thing. Like you said, just tacos. You, you can't, well, you can, because if literally if you walk out of this store, when you talk about competition across the street, I've got one guy. Across that street, there's another of these big box brands. There's another guy. Across, a mile down that way, there's the, the other C, Right. You know, so competition and, and the need for marketing and standing outside of the box is is always there. So what have you what are you doing in your current marketing plan to keep customers coming? Yeah. Um, showing them value. Right. So obviously we're not the cheapest. You know that I gave you an sure. estimate, which I thought was very fair. And we're moving forward on that. It's just, again, entrepreneur went. When do I have the transaction to be able to send it to yeah, you right. for you to be able to provide the right. service, right? For so sure. Showing, showing, showing value is a big thing. Um, and then also listen to the customer's problem, right? And me painting their house may not be the problem. The problem may be they have family moving in and they want the room to be new, right? Or they had mold and they want to replace the drywall. Or right. Whatever their problem is, is what I'm here to fix. Obviously they hired a painter to paint, but finding out the problems figuring out how to resolve their problem and do it in a friendly way to where they're comfortable giving you their business. Yeah. Because as a business owner, for one, leads are expensive. I think I'm paying $27 for a lead on Facebook, closer to $44 for a lead on, on Google, um, and then all the other monthly things that I pay for. Right? right. So if I can get that customer to trust me, know, like, and trust me, and never to go anywhere else, that's a lifelong customer. That's a lifelong lead that I will never have to pay for again other than just treating them the right way. Because the repeat customer for you is a long throw, right? Yeah. I mean, you might not see that person again for 10 years. Right. Right? I mean, I, I yeah. you would be able to say that better than I do, right. but I imagine you, if you paint my house today, I don't need that for another 10 or 20 years depending upon how much I beat up my house, right? So, but... The, and the way we're different is when you get that Christmas card with our faces on it, when you get the, the Thanksgiving, you know, the gifts for Thanksgiving and yeah. all those things and you remember us, people that you know and you like and they, that trust you, you're going to send me to them. I love right. it. I would, I would call that being major league. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's a good, that's it. Yeah. That's major league, right? I, I love that. So awesome. So I want to switch a little bit, right? Because... You're working on your own podcast, right? You're working on you, you. You put a little message out about it. You you had all these wild lights going in it, right? And it was it was like midnight. Like you want to get into what keeps people up at night, right? Like for me, owning a business is obviously stressful. It causes you to have these thoughts and these processes of insecurity, fear. How do I keep moving? Have I bought too much and built myself up too much? Are my outs way more than my ins, right? So so I wrote down dark thoughts, but I think you call it something else. Talk about the avenue that you're trying to go down the entrepreneur route and what thoughts you're trying to bring out in guys like you, guys like me, guys like people that are following this right now. So that's uh, it's still in the works. Truthfully, it's it's time. Like sure. we talked about, you know, as an entrepreneur, we don't have much of that. But uh, so the podcast is going to be called Voices of the Dark, 
Um, and it was something that Reagan and I were standing in neat coffee bar where we were asked to speak at a, a young professionals meeting. And we both look at this book that was on the counter at the same exact time. And we just like smacked each other on the arm, like dude, voices of the dark. Yeah. And we're like, that's a podcast. Cause we're always talking about like what keeps us up at night. We're always talking about like, why don't we stop? Like, why is our minds always going? Right. Um, even when I'm at football practice, my mind's ta- thinking about business. I'm thinking right. about helping my, my, my people in my group grow their business. Right. My mind's always going. So I was like, why don't I just bring this to a podcast forum and allow people to come in and talk about the things that keep them up at night. It may not be business. It may be relationships. It may be goals. It may be their fitness journeys. It may be whatever it is. Um, but talking about it helps. Right. Um, so Voices of the Dark was going to be a podcast. It still will be. It's just a matter of time figuring it out. Uh, we've had some some mixed things, you know, being a podcast like this live, you can see who I am or doing it anonymously, you know, just me on camera, you behind a camera, potentially even uh, voice changing because some people won't open up. There's some things that I will tell you privately, but I will never tell you on camera. Sure. Right? And that's just that's how a lot of people are. Uh, then some people like listening to podcasts. Some people like watching podcasts. So there's a bunch of different things. I want to I want to figure out what, who is going to listen to our podcast before I just throw it out there to get eaten alive by all the wolves. <laughs> you know what I call that? Dipping your toe in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I call that, right? I call that dipping your toe in the pool. You want to see how the water is before you just jump. Right. right, 99% of times when people stick their toe in the water, they cool. don't jump, <laughs> right? They don't jump, right? That young lady sitting right in front of me right now, which you, you can't see her on film, but she taught me a long time ago, if you're always waiting to be ready, yeah. you will never be ready because there's always something in your brain that's going to go, nope. No, I had a situation yesterday. I won't talk about it too much, but I had a situation yesterday where where I read something online and it, it really made me want to have a knee-jerk reaction, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, mm, got to think, got to think, got to slow down, got to think, right? So, so what are for you some of those things? I'm going to move this real yeah. quick. I thought that. What are some of those things that keep you... Up in the dark. Oh, so I would say... If you don't mind sharing, right? What's your, what's your comfortable sharing? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm not where I should be at this point of my entrepreneurial journey, uh, whether it's uh, business, coaching, whatever that may be. Sure. So that keeps me up at night. Uh, whether I did enough today will keep me up tonight. Okay. Uh, conversations I've had with my kids or my wife. Does like, that ever get quelled though? Did I do enough today? Do you, do, you, do you think if you, if you did something and you achieved an accomplishment every hour for 24 hours, you would lay down and go, I did enough today. Yeah. That's but just, that's just the mind. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll have a forever podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that those things keep me up at night. And then, um, you know, family journeys will keep me up at night. Um, uh, conversations I've had with other entrepreneurs will keep me up. Literally everything, you know, yeah. payroll, marketing. Uh, I would say a lot of it's business. For me, I have a fear that I'm, and, and, and my wife can tell you, I have a fear that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and it's just all going to be gone. Yeah. Like yeah. I, it's, it's, it's an irrational fear, right? Because I'm building a business here. People come in left and right. The community enjoys what we're doing. We're, we've got, you know, great inspections, great people, great staff. Same thing for you, yeah. right? You've got great people, great staff. But it's that fear for me of what if I wake up tomorrow and I've and I don't have it? Yeah. And it goes away. What if they don't sign up for the tournaments? What if they don't come in? You know, especially like look, I can tell you in November, I mean this store was was very dead, yeah. but it's my first November, right? And they say season, right? Yeah. So man, just so just I, so go ahead. I would say if you follow me on Facebook, you probably see me talk about fear a lot. Right. Yeah. Fear is a word that I I personally don't believe in, right? Fear is, if you look it up in a dictionary, it's an imaginary word you must believe in in order for it to exist, yeah. right? Don't quote me on it. That's probably not the yeah, exact way it sure. is, but if you read into it a little bit more in depth, that's what it says. Um, and I actually have a, a Facebook reel that got a ton of, ton of reviews and I literally wrote on a board, yeah, see like you know, yeah. not posting, not actually writing fear and then it exists, right? Yeah. Um, but truthfully now, 
I do have a little bit of fear. I think my fear is that when my time comes, right, when it's time for me to say goodbye, yeah, did I do what I was put here to do, right? That's my fear. Was Am I here to be a husband? Am I here to be a father? Am I here to be an entrepreneur? Am I here to be successful? Am I here to guide people? Am I here to coach people? What was I put here to do? And not knowing that is my fear. What's, what's successful though, right? Success to me is time. There's no amount of money that would make me successful. There's no amount of of, of objects, right? No matter no, no not there's no I couldn't own ten cars or five houses and consider myself successful. Right. Success to me is time. Time with my family, time with my wife, time with my kids, going on a cruise and not worrying about what's going on. Sure. That's success to me. Can you do that? If you went on a seven day cruise, would you be able to let the business go? No. Right. That's I'm more stressed out on vacation than I am at work. Yeah. For me, yeah. right? My wife will tell you, oh, honey, I, you know, let's go here, here, and here. And I book the trip, yeah. and I go, and it's fun, and I enjoy it, and I have memories. Of You're not the fully there. But I'm, I, 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 yes. So I try to be there more and more, but yes, this this little thing that, you know, is is constantly allowing me to check, check in, check out, right? Uh, all of that. Yeah, so I, I, I do. Most people go on vacation to relax. Yeah. I go on vacation and get stressed out. Right, right. Yeah. And that's our job as business owners um, and as the leaders in our industries to put people in place to be able to do those things. Yeah. Um, but that takes time. You know, that's a, that's a journey on itself. It's taking a year here. Yeah. I'm, right? on, I'm on my second business, total of five years, four years in business, and I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Yeah. I have two here, Evelyn and Drew. I just, <clears throat> they're both here now. Um, both two assistant general managers, and but they've been here a year. It's taken a year to get them to understand the quality that goes on here, the level of cleanliness that goes on here, the quality of the food, the customer service, you know. And now I'm to the point where I can go break out and start another one. So uh, Samer says, let's go. So proud of you, Tyler. Uh, Jessica says, Tyler Hardigan, problem solving is a huge trust building method. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do, right? Our job is to build, lead, mentor, develop, hold accountable, train. Um, so what's next? Man, I don't know. That's an ongoing battle in my head. Um, obviously, growing my business. Uh, I want to open up other avenues within my business. Um, you know, last year I subbed out probably close to $200,000 in work mm. to other business owners that just dropped the ball, right? They don't communicate the way we do. They don't service our customers the way we do. Um, and that was eye opening to me. Like why, if I, if I'm capable of hiring and building a team to, to take on those services, why wasn't I doing that? Yeah. Um, so my goal is this year to launch a few more services within our company. Um, and then obviously grow and build on that, uh, putting people in place to, to manage those roles, uh, and, and grow, the business right right now it's still a job yeah i'm an entrepreneur i own a business but right now i'm still clocking and clocking out of my own business yeah uh, so my goal is to be able to get away from that um but i i really enjoy the sales the marketing the being involved in my business right i i would love to be the ron smith and sit in my hot tub and, and <laughs> listen to the birds sing but like and go to prime 52 <laughs> or whatever it is Prime yeah, 88, right? Prime 88. Yeah. yeah, I would love to be there, and he's he's a mentor of mine too. He's, he's he plays a big role in my life, and uh, it's just my time will come, right? And I have to accept that. Yeah, because you're still there's no, still not a three in front of your age, right? There is, man. I hit thirty in December. There you go. <laughs> so so just thirty years old, right? You're dealing with a lot, right? You're you're you say I'm not where I want to be, right? You're 8 years, 7 years into business ownership, which would put you 16 years ahead of me by age and when you owned your first business. Right? right? And so I do that a lot. Um you're still young. Like you'll and you're, yeah, and you're like whatever, bro. That doesn't help me yeah, now. It doesn't. And honestly, <laughs> it kind of puts more fuel under my butt and like makes me just want to go harder, right? Yeah. Because if, if Reagan's still watching, he's going to laugh, but like I say all the time like I when I'm your age, I don't want to be doing what you're doing, right? I want to be successful, yeah. right? I want to have time. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do and I want no one to have control over me. I love right? what you said there that success equals time. Yeah. Right. I, I do. Like, I've not heard it put that way before. And and that's right. Right. They, it, it makes a lot of sense. If I can wake up in the morning 
with, you know, even though we'll be up at 5 a.m. just because that's how our brain is. Yeah. But if I could look over at my wife and she doesn't have to wake up till 9 a.m. and we get to go do whatever we want for the day or, or you know, yeah, that, I, I like that. Success equals time. Time with my family, time to be able to help others, volunteer, give back. I like that. Jasmine checks in and says, holla. And then got to do that work. You'll get there. Listen, I, I, I two things I want to I want to leave with with, you know, talking about kind of hub pro. Right. Because you look on here. Right. Samra, Jessica, Jasmine, Reagan, Cyrus, Jen. Right. Brandon, like, like this is the crew. Right. There's a dozen more. No, there's a dozen. Sure. Right. There's a dozen more here. Right. Like. It baffles me that, you know. 42,000 people on the hub, you know, all these people go to the, and then people get upset that there's only 12 or 15 people that are constantly on there. But, you know, use me, right? I'm a guy who's only been running a business in this area for a year, came to you guys, came to the meetings, came here, came there, right? So my message to other business owners on the hub that are watching this, right? If you want to be engaged, if you want that marketing, if you want that individual attention, if you want to be able to level up, just show up. Yeah. Right? That's just I mean. show up. I mean, showing up is a big part of it, but building those relationships, right? Every single person you named on there, I know their husband. I've met their children, right? We've had uh, Christmas parties together, and I'm a big believer in building a business with people that, that you know, like and trust, right? Yeah. So all of those people I've recommended to, to family, to friends, to clients, because I, I know, like, and trust them, right? Yeah. So just showing up is, yes, that's important, but that isn't as important as it is to take the time to get to know these people. Um, because Bill Hoops is not going to recommend me just because I'm the guy that walked in his door and bought a taco. He's going to recommend ah. me because we've put in the grind together. We've been through some struggles and we've, we've been on softball team and got our butts kicked and we've won right. and we, we've done all those things. And, uh, you know, I know his wife and he's met my wife. My kids have drawn on his chalkboard, all those things. Sure. Right? So it's, uh, it's more important than just showing up. It's Knowing more, the personality is reliable. The person is reliable. Yep. Love it. So what's next? What's, I know you said a lot of things, but yeah. major league specifically, what, what's the, what's, where do we want to be at the end of this year with major league? Hmm. I just want to do more. Just want to do <laughs> I just more. want to do more. Like I have these numbers in my head um, of where I want to be, and uh, I'm not far from there. It's just putting in the time and the grind to get to where I need to be to get to those numbers, right? Whether it's hiring more people, getting rid of some dead weight, whatever it may be, uh, I just need to figure that out to get to that level. Um, as far as major league, man, major league is – it's major league, right? Like, how I, I, I don't is say, major league. I don't want to say I'm content there, but I don't put all my eggs in, into that basket, sure. right? Like, there's other things like the coaching thing. Um, you know, I asked to speak at uh, Pasco Growth. Uh, yeah, Pasco I saw Growth that. Good for you. March 14. Yeah. Um, to a couple hundred business owners. I think. How do you feel about that? Standing up in front of three, four hundred business owners that maybe, you know, are where you want to be, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Public speaking was one of my biggest fears. And in order to get over that, you just have to do it, right? I, do it. Um, I hate being on camera, but I'm in front of cameras every single day. I hate speaking to people I don't know, but I do it every single day. Um, and in order to get over those fears, you just have to do it. I spoke on stage maybe three or four times, um, never to a group of people. I have no idea who they are. Right. I have no idea who's coming. I have no idea who bought tickets. I have no idea who requested to be in our breakout session. No clue until I get there. Got it. That makes me nervous. Right. Usually going to a public speaking event, I know who's there. Right. I probably sold them the ticket or they RSVP'd with me. Sure. Um, so a little different. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for that. And then obviously the kickball tournament we have on the 30th. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Raise some money. Give it back to the wrap house. Yeah. Uh, and I see you have a uh, fitness wrote down, but we haven't talked about that. Yeah. So I did write that down because you, yeah. Uh, and, and we can kind of close out with that. Right. Because I see the post you're at, you're at the crunch down there. Uh, you've become the five thirty guy, yeah. right? You look better, right? You look like you're moving in the right direction. There's noticeable differences. Uh, so talk about that. How are you on your fitness journey? Yeah. So there's a, there's some fuel behind that, um, and I think it's the other guy on the camera at 60 for me that he ah. plays every single day. I see it 100 times a day, um, but if you haven't clicked on that hashtag to see where Bill has gone over the last three or four years, um, it's 
pretty exciting to do. Uh, but the 60 for me, so we, we sat down at your house, yeah. right? We had a meeting. We talked about time. We talked about writing down what I do every yeah. hour on the hour, time with my kids. When How I much eat. time did you find? Yeah, I found a lot of time. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of the time that I sat here just scrolling, right? Um, but with that time, I've now put it into fitness. So I, I'm at the gym every morning. Yeah. Um, I watch what I eat. Uh, and a little over three and a half months, I'm down 34 pounds. That's it, baby. So I broke 200. I'm down to like 198. Yeah. Uh, not quite at my goal, but I'm putting on some muscle, you know, feeling better, looking better. Uh, so there's that plays a big effect. But actually, so I had a Hub Pro meeting. Yeah. I was on stage. You might have been there. I was sitting in a chair just like this. Yeah. And Jen Verge took a picture of me from like the crowd, right? Yeah, looking at sure. me. And I looked disgust you had pms <laughs> whatever that is pregnant man syndrome yeah, yeah 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 with like d's yeah rather than like a's sure right? um so yeah i just looked miserable uh looked disgusting didn't look happy yeah. didn't feel happy um and that messed me up mentally Moving positive in the wrong direction right yeah. yeah i want to tell you how to live your life and grow your business and i can't do it sure. right that's literally the way i took it um so i started started going to the gym me reagan Thomas Holcomb, yeah. uh, Tim yeah. Grace, yeah. we all hold each other account hold each other accountable and go to the gym uh, at least four days a week. Uh, started off at four thirty, and then it was like five fifteen. Now it's like five thirty, but we're there every single day, uh, and that honestly mentally has helped me a ton in life and business uh, with my mood, everything. Yeah, uh, so I love that. Right, you yeah. mentioned sixty to sixty for me. Right, I got it here. Here, I, this camera always messes my sides up. <laughs> I got it here on my shirt. I got it here on my hat, right? So that's what it is, right? 60 for me is 60 minutes a day for you to be able to focus on you, right? Too often, 24 hours in a day, we want to give that to everybody else. We want to give every hour we have to somebody else. And what it does is it causes us to feel like if we give anything to ourselves, we are selfish, Right. And, and, oh, I can't do this because I could be taking care of this person. Oh, I can't do that because my baby needs this. Oh, I can't do that because my husband needs that. Oh, I can't do this because my employees need that. Not realizing that if we don't take care of ourselves, we cannot take care of anyone. Right. I can't be the best husband that I want to be because I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not researching what being a husband means. Right. I can't be the best father because I'm not showing up. I'm not talking to my kids. I'm not nurturing a good fostering relationship because I don't have that in my own head. I can't go out and tell people to be physically fit because I look like the grape ape, right? I can't go out and tell people to run their business because I'm not running my own, right? So 60 minutes a day is critical to be able to find your way uh, moving forward. And I have built my whole name and my whole brand on it. And now that's moving to lead your journey. And, you know, and I appreciate that because when you're doing this stuff, you don't realize the impact that it has on people, right? And, and how it can help motivate and change them but 60 minutes i don't know if you mentioned it but it doesn't have to be fitness no right you could no. do 60 minutes of meditating 60 100%. minutes of praying 60 minutes of reading a book whatever yeah. that 60 minutes is it's important to have because um to me i take that 60 i turn it into 120 i'm at the gym for two hours every single morning yeah um and then taking an hour today to do a podcast like this is my time this yeah. is still on me yeah um so i might get a little bit more than 60 but it's needed it is very needed um, and it helps you mentally, physically, emotionally. It helps you in a ton of ways. Um, and it, you you may not realize you need it until you start it. And it's a personal release. And I love that you said it's not all about fitness. And Jesse says, what's up, guys? What's going on? Um, I, I, it's not all about personal fitness. A lot of times because I post when I'm working out, yeah. people do confuse that for, you know, it's all about getting 60 minutes in the gym. I mean, that's great. Uh, and certainly where it started, right? For me, it was 60 minutes on the track running, right? That Forrest Gump syndrome, I'm going to run. And then it turned into 60 minutes reading and writing. And now I do a leadership series a couple days a week where I talk about those specific things. So awesome. I, I, I appreciate you pointing that out because I did write it down. I did want to talk about it because I'm sitting here when you first walk in, I'm like, oh, that is Tyler. I mean, you, it is a noticeable difference. So certainly keep rolling. Well, listen, guys. It is uh, Tuesday, right? And if you want to get a hold of Tyler, uh, his information is up on the board there. Paint 
paintcompanynearme.com, paintcompanynearme.com, 727-339-1091. Major League Painters, they can handle your painting needs, they can handle inside, outside, residential, commercial, smack it, flip it, rub it down, oh no, right? If you're going to draft somebody for your painting needs, make sure you got the number one pick, and that's Major League Painters, right? So paintcompanynearme.com, 727-339-1091. Nine one. This is Bill with Capital Tacos here in Trinity. Tyler, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, everything uh, you know is exactly what I expected. Great conversation. I love to see your project pro progress physically, emotionally, mentally. Uh, you were one of the first guys that I connected with in the hub, um, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So uh, I appreciate you coming on. Any closing remarks? No. Uh, so, yeah, I do want to say one thing, actually, real quick. Um, on my way here, I was having a conversation with somebody, and I was like, I've never sat down with Bill Hoops and not left crying. Right. So I just want to say this is a goal of mine <laughs> to sit down. Well, with we Mr. can talk Hoops. for ten more minutes and we can break it down. Uh, sit down with Mr. Hoops and talk about business and life and not leave crying. Not why? Like, why do you cry when you leave for me though? Bill Hoops hits you where you need to be hit. Yeah. And uh, like I said, he's a mentor. He needs. A, he need. He's someone you need in your corner, um, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yeah. Um, because he'll tell you the things that your loved ones won't tell you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I sure. do appreciate that. And and the intention is never to make you cry like, you know, you're a terrible person, but it's it's this is where you're spending your energy. Right. This is where you focus your time. Don't you think we could be moving this direction and then, you know, opening up those thought processes and all of that. But this was more about you yeah, yeah, yeah. and and business and good stuff and and the things that you're doing. Um, but good. I'm glad that I helped you achieve another goal today. <laughs> <Appreciate that. laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, look, that is Tyler. Uh, he is an amazing uh, man, amazing father, husband, friend, and mentor to a lot of people. Uh, you need some painting done. You need to learn about your business. You want to come to a young and hungry meeting and, and learn uh, about growing your business professionally. Stop in. Check out the Young and Hungry on Facebook. Check out Major League Painters on Facebook. Uh, and check out Capital Tacos Trinity on Facebook. We appreciate your time and joining us. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. We do these talks the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Uh, so we will be back in just about two weeks uh, with another guest who deals with uh, lawn and pest care uh, for your property, a gentleman who uh, had a self-starter uh, who over the last three to four years has built up an enterprise here in Hernando and Pasco County. So I'm looking forward to speaking with him and many others. If you're interested in being on a guest, uh, you can contact me at trinity at capitaltacos.com or send me a text at 704-807-5663. Y'all have a great day. Hoops out.